Welcome to Education Today. I'm Colby Heike, a senior from Katanning Senior High School from the Armstrong School District. Today we have two very special guests with us, Mr. Don Swanson and Mrs. Aaron Kidder. Don and Aaron both teach in the English department at Katanning Senior High School. Aaron teaches literary studies and writing for communications. Don teaches media and filmmaking as well as TV production. Welcome to Education Today. Will you please introduce yourselves? Well, my name's uh, Mr. Swanson, and in addition to media and filmmaking and TV production, I teach 10th grade English. I see. My name is Mrs. Kidder, and in addition to the English electives, I also teach English 10. Okay. Well, how long have you each been teaching in your field? Well, uh, I've been an English teacher for five years. This is my fifth year. Um, ninth in the district total. In terms of communications, I've been working in the communications field in some shape or form since the summer of 2001, so that'd be 12 years. So five years as an English teacher, 12 years in communications. Holy cow. And nine and a half years teaching English. Has communications always been your first interest? Well, um, I actually wanted to be a teacher way back when I was a sophomore in high school. My issue was I was afraid of what to teach. I, I, I kind of had that fear of being like, do I really want to do the same thing over and over again several periods a day? And my interests were varied from English to history to music. And I actually started life out in college as a music ed major. Um, what I found out a lot later down the road is that it doesn't matter if you have the same prep, every single class is different in its own unique way with its own set of challenges. Uh, as far as communications, I've always had an interest since I was in high school playing around with the camera. And um, I've done work for the late uh, Congressman Jack Murtha, um, different technology firms in and around Indiana County down toward Pittsburgh, the Armstrong School District uh, before Mr. Chris Garitano. I was the media coordinator here, and I also do a lot of freelance and independent film work. Very interesting. You got a lot there, don't you? Mrs. Kip? Uh, I don't have as much. Um, I really was interested in teaching English. Uh, my interest in communications happened later in college when I took a lot of communications courses. So that would be my, where my interest comes from. How exactly would you define the field of communications? I would say the transfer of information, which isn't very exciting definition, but well, Ms. Kidder, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think communications is ultimately any message that is composed, sent, and received, um, more or less. And I know the electives we have at Catanning all focus on that theme in some way, shape, or form. From public speaking, which is an elective that every student has to take in order to graduate, it ultimately focuses on composing a message, transferring that message, and making sure that message is received. I know in TV production, we do that same thing, but we do it through the medium of video, film, and television, and we just go a little bit further with that in media and filmmaking as well, and also in Aaron's electives, I would think. Right. Um, in writing for communication, obviously, it's more written than it would be public speaking or on TV, but, you know, creative expression would be the main focus. All right. Why do you feel that teaching communications is important? Either of you? Um, I think no matter what a student does in the future, reading, writing, speaking, and listening will be part of it, no matter what their job is. So communications is part of every field, so I think that it's a nice strength to have when you go into the workforce. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think no matter what you go to become after high school, communications plays a major part, and more than that, just as a human nature. I mean, we're social animals, so to speak, and communications is a very basic part of our life experience. Do you think that communications is a popular subject among your students? I think so, definitely, especially yeah. with media and technology, the way it is very popular right now. So I think that taking classes like TV production students are definitely interested in that. Yeah, I'd agree. What are some things that the students do in your courses? Uh, I'll start with writing for communication. We do a lot of creative writing, so we don't focus on essays and research papers like you do in your English classes, but we look more at like writing children's books, um, plays, poetry, short stories, so a lot of the, the writing is centered around what the students are interested in writing about. 
Um, in literary studies, it's more of a discussion group based on different readings. And both of those classes are based on student choice. So it, outside of the regular English classes, you have um, more choice in what you're going to be studying. Uh, at a base level, um, in TV production, they run the morning announcements, which is a practical experience as well as a creative expression experience to some degree. Um, uh, but more than that, there are several projects that the kids do during the course of the year. And the way I approach TV1 is I treat it almost like it's two classes to begin with. The fall semester is more of a tech ed kind of class, and the spring semester you get more into the communications English theory kind of things. So some of the things they do, as you will no doubt remember, Colby are the uh, picture project where you have to develop a narrative and tell it through still imagery and music entirely. And when I say still imagery, I don't mean video, but like an actual still image. Uh, to PSAs, commercials, short films, documentaries, newscasts, and then obviously education today. Um, each class comes up here on a rotating basis once every marking period as the lab component to the course. And then in addition to that, uh, one thing we focus in on that goes more, that aligns itself more with the English side is basically just how to read the media with things like miss and scene editing techniques and basically seeing the media as something that's constructed therefore can be deconstructed and you can kind of look for a bias in that. Do you think they actually enjoy all the aspects of your classes? I think so for the most part. I know every year I have a couple kids that moan and groan about doing the uh, papers on miss and scene and biased in editing, but even the ones that moan and groan about it typically find it fascinating while we're going through the process of breaking down shots, breaking down editing, looking at something and explaining, you know, it's put together so you would think this, but in reality, if you look at it shot by shot by shot, it's actually, this is what's actually going on. Well, and I think that they're both, or all the classes we're talking about are electives, so the students choose to be there. Right. So I think in most cases they are definitely interested in it. Yeah. Uh, this one's actually directed at you, Mr. Swanson. Uh, how is it that TV production is associated with English classes? Well, I think it's, uh, in a lot of ways, the perfect English elective, or one of the perfect <laughs> English electives. Uh, it, like I said, it combines technology with your base communication theory, which is most certainly English-related. And I also think, um, I know me personally, I get a kick. I'm doing Julius Caesar in my English classes right now, and a lot of my students, I think, just think I go home and quote Shakespeare to my wife all night and read like, I don't know, Hamlet or something to my kids to put them to bed at night and everything. And the reality is, one, that that's not true, but also the reality is that kids, students, young people are engaged in the media more than anything else. And being bombarded with this constant imagery and messaging through media, I think that it behooves you very much to be someone who knows how to negotiate that, to navigate it, to be able to see something and actually see it for what it is and not to necessarily be spoon-fed a uh, message, you know, just because you don't understand. Like one thing I enjoy saying is that um, a film is just like a book. Just like you can use literary criticism to deconstruct a book, you can use film theory and criticism to deconstruct a movie. And they overlap a lot in a lot of areas. So in that term, you know, like I said, the first semester probably is a little more tech ed because at that point in time, we get into theory a little bit as a basis of the start of the course, which I'm sure you remember was no doubt your favorite part of the course, the first three weeks of notes, followed, yeah. by, the, uh, followed by the test. Awful. But, uh, oh, come on, Colby wasn't that bad. But um, from there, you know, we get into the techie stuff, like these are your shots, this is camera, this is how you use it, this is the editor, this is what you can do with it, this is how you use it. And then once that's built, we start exploring you know, the product made with the tools. And I think the product is more English and the tools are more tech ed. Uh, Aaron, what do you find most rewarding about teaching literary studies and writing for communications? Um, well, to go back to the elective point, most students want to be there. In English classes, you don't always find that. English is not everybody's subject. So I like the electives because there's student choice involved. Um, I also like the creative aspect of it for writing for communications like I'm just giving an idea or a general idea of what the writing will be and it's the students that come up with everything so I just enjoy reading their work 
and seeing how their mind works. Uh, in literary studies, it's more of a discussion group, so like a college level class where we read something and then analyze it and talk about it. All of the pressures of an English class, like vocabulary and grammar, um, all of the strict structure that's in English class, the research paper that everybody dreads, is out of that. So I, I really enjoy that freedom of expression and the chance for the students to really, you know, write what they enjoy to write. So. What are some of the challenges that come with teaching communications? Oh, well, I'll take that one first. Okay. Uh, for okay. me, I know uh, TV production in particular, and uh, maybe Erin sees this a little bit in her classes too, but in TV and media and filmmaking, the upper level course, it's not necessarily a structured course. And um, I know there are some people that think teaching it is such a breeze, you know, but when there's no structure, you know, that that means chaos on some level is going to ensue. And um, you have to worry about, you know, where the kids are, what they're doing, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, what product they're producing, if it meets certain requirements or guidelines and things like that is set forth by you as the instructor or the principal or the larger school district and things of that nature. Um, also, in something like, and again, speaking from TV production, uh, I agree with Mrs. Kidder entirely. It's an elective, so kids elect to be there. And by and large, I find that to be true. Most kids are really into it. But there's no doubt always going to be a part of it somewhere that you're not going to like. You know, like say in my case, some kids love being in front of the camera and just drag their feet and drive me crazy when they have to edit and vice versa and things like that. So I would say that as well as in my case, I mean, you're young people. Young people have a very distinct taste and sense of humor and things mm -hmm. like that, which um, though I myself may find funny some of the time, not all of the time, but some of the time, um, it's not always going to mesh with uh, what would be deemed appropriate in a school setting. So those for me personally are probably the biggest challenges that I've faced. And I would just kind of reiterate what Mr. Swanson said, you know, that lack of structure, you take the structure away like I just mentioned, which makes it fun, but then that kind of puts you in a realm where you have to be a little more flexible. Like if I give a poetry assignment and I keep saying quality over quantity and one student writes a one line poem and somebody mm -hmm. else writes a three page poem, then I have to figure out how to do a grading scale because I've given them so much freedom to make those decisions. So I'd say that's the biggest challenge. Yeah, I, I think the more fun you're having, the more stressed we probably <laughs> are. That would be it. Yeah. How can you build up the programs, you think, to make kids want to join them? I'd say that it's kind of on you guys, on the students. Like, you can tell your friends that you enjoy TV production or you enjoy writing for communication and let the underclassmen know what the classes are like because that way I think the classes kind of speak for themselves. Yeah. If you're interested in communications, and everybody will have communications in their future, then there's no reason why, you know, students shouldn't take the classes. But I think if they know what the classes are like, I think that's what will build up the program. Do you think some of the students just try to join them as a blow-off or to take it seriously? I've had that in the past in TV production. Uh, luckily, that has not been the majority, you know, um, in all the years I've been involved with TV at Catanning. But there have have undoubtedly been there's a, a couple. There's a few. Yeah. And they either weed themselves out, they take themselves out of the class because they realize they will have to do the work even though there is more freedom, or they, you know, their try, their, try their, their best <laughs> and their grade is not. Yeah, you know, their grade reflects their performance. Okay. So. Okay, thanks very much. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Armstrong School District's education today. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. Welcome back to Education Today with Mrs. Erin Kidder and Mr. Donald Swanson. So what are, your, what are some of your successes, Mr. Swanson? Uh, in terms of the class, I think the student products um, ultimately come out. Um, they, 
there, over the years, there have been some phenomenal episodes of Education Today that have actually unannounced a lot of people, won PR awards at the state level and things like that. Uh, years ago, we did a, uh, when the PSSA was still the big thing, we did a couple videos on that, which got used around the county, and uh, that our principal was able to kind of brag about to other schools and things like that. Um, last year, we had a student place at the uh, TVT competition at Robert Morris, which is basically a competition where high schools from the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, compete uh, against one another, against like, you know, up to hundreds of schools, hundreds and hundreds of students and things like that. And um, basically, I think just the student product, there have been some phenomenal products that have come out of TV production. And um, that seems to be the case every year. And they can be used for a variety of things. Some of them don't go beyond the morning announcements. Some of them go into competitions. Some of them come up here and are a part of education today. But there have been some phenomenal student works. And I, I would echo what Mr. Swanson's saying as well. I think in writing for communications, that's what it's about, the student product, what they have. Um, it, whether they win awards in writing contests or it's just the personal product that they have produced, I think that's really what's neat about it. Uh, literary studies, being that it's more of a literature-based class, I'd say just the student interaction would really be the success when they're talking about literature and they don't even realize how much effort and thought they're putting into it and they're having fun doing it. But for me, that's the su success. So. What is the key to a successful program, in your opinions? <laughs> I, well, I, I would say the students, ultimately. Um, like Aaron said before the break, you know, uh, getting the word out, building the program. I think that um, I think that it says a lot about your program. Who takes your class says a lot about your class when you are an elective. Um, and I think, by and large, that the electives across the board um, have spoken to the better more so than. The worst in that regard. Um, uh, yeah, I think getting big numbers and the cali caliber of student that you get to take the class is probably right. how I'd gauge that. Definitely the students. Have you had any alumni peruse in the communications field? Uh, definitely English and communications. I think a lot of students do focus on that as a major or pick it up as a minor or simply just use it you know, in their future classes as a hobby, but I'd say definitely. Yeah, um, well, one that comes to mind off the top of my head is your brother, um, Corey, is at IUP, and he's uh, actually worked with me on some independent projects since graduating high school, and I know that he uh, got a gig on a college show, and he'd recently picked up a job write, script writing for a professor. You had him, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, which would be her victory. I, he, in addition to getting the gig on a show as on-air talent, he also recently got hired by a professor to do script writing and work on grants and things like that. What do you really expect out of your students in these classes? I, I would say effort. I mean, yeah. they're there for a reason. They want to take the class, but just to put the effort in, I, I think each project is different for every student. So, you know, to watch them shine when they are successful is great. Yeah, and, and I'd echo that as well. Like, um, it is an elective. You've elected to be there. Definitely an effort. And uh, like Mrs. Kidder just said, you're not going to get equal quality across the board every time. But to see students grow, ultimately, I know um, kind of my joke in TV production is that if I've ruined movies for you by the time you're done with the class, then I've done my job the way I intended to do it at the start of the year. Movies are a lot more predictable now. No, you're, right, welcome. Awesome. you're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome, Colby. Uh, what are some of the core benefits of the communications program? Well, I think what I mentioned before, just the idea that reading, writing, speaking, and listening will be part of your daily life. I think that improving your communication skills will help in all kinds of fields and you know future endeavors. So. Yeah, I'd agree with that. <clears throat> um, I think that communication sometimes kind of gets looked down upon a little bit. Um, in, in a broader sense, but I mean, Aaron's completely right. It's something that we do every single day, just on a base human nature. And again, if you 
especially if you're going on to some form of higher education, you better believe you're going to need to know how to communicate. But even if you go into like the military or the workforce or something like that, I mean, you need to know how to say something and have it be understood and how to understand what's coming back to you. It's just a base need of life. These next questions are a little more personal level, but where did you guys graduate from high school? I went to Tanning High School. I went to Purchase Line Junior Senior High School. Where's that at? Nowhere. Oh. <laughs> Middle of. Uh, actually, no, and, and I'm joking if by chance anyone from Purchase Line happens to see this. Love my, love, love the dragons. Um, it's in northeastern Indiana County, and it bleeds into Clearfield County. And where did you go to college? Uh, I graduated from Slippery Rock University for undergrad, and I got my master's at Camden University. Um, IUP for undergrad. I was a comm media major, then I got a master's in educational technology from IUP, then a film production certificate from Pittsburgh Filmmakers, and then I went back to IUP uh, to get an English do, uh, master's degree. Did you specifically go for communications? Uh, at Slippery Rock, the degree is, my degree is in English education, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, that. I'm kind of the reverse. I started communications and then kind of came around. Mm -hmm. Did anything influence you to want to pursue that career? Um, well, an English teacher at Katang High School, Sandy Bradigan, was my biggest influence, but for communications specifically, the former public speaking teacher, Ed Bauer, was really a big influence for me because I hated public speaking. And he kind of made me see that you could use that nervous energy. And he was a fabulous teacher. So he really inspired me to be interested in communications. Um, in hindsight, uh, arguably my favorite teachers, or most of my favorite teachers, were my English teachers. And the ones that had the biggest influence on me tended to be my English teachers. In particular, my 10th grade English teacher, Mrs. Miller, who also taught newspaper. And I did that my junior and senior year, mostly because of her, and then I grew to love that, and that was kind of a doorway into communications for me. And, and also, Ed Bauer, when I was the media coordinator for the district here, I worked very closely with Mr. Bauer, and just seeing him interact with the kids. I, that last year um, that I was the media coordinator in his last year of teaching, we kind of schemed a little bit behind the scenes, hoping that I could kind of get in down at Catanian to take over when he retired, but uh, we talked an awful lot just about teaching and things like that. And I would say in terms of the way I teach, no one's had a bigger impact on me than Ed Bauer. Is there anything either of you would like to add for the benefit of our viewers or those who'd like to pursue a career in communication fields? I guess I don't have anything, Colby. You've done a nice job of covering all the important points, Mr. Swanson. Uh, just to recap some of the things that we said, you know, it's something that's important and based to human life, um, irregardless of all of the academic hoopla that goes along with it. And um, if you are a student in high school, there are a lot of classes. Like, I'm willing to bet a lot of students don't necessarily see the connection between public speaking, TV production, and writing for communications. And that's because they're different animals, but they're all part of the same thing. So if you are a student who's interested in communications, then by all means, take an elective. Mm -hmm. You know, try it out. I, I, I'm sure Aaron's had this, but I've certainly had it. I've had kids, I'm, I've had very few kids that flat out didn't care for the class. Most of the kids enjoy the class. And of those kids that enjoy it, there's always a couple that, yeah, I enjoyed it, but it's not my thing. But that you don't know until you try it. And I think that's one of the, um, things that education needs to do is to provide opportunities for students to explore these different things to see where their interests actually lie. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Swanson. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank Don Swanson and Aaron Kidder for taking the time out of their busy schedule to join us. Our thanks also go out to the TV production students of Katanning High School, led by their teacher, Mr. Don Swanson. They were our film crew today. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. DVD copies of this and all Education Today programming can be requested by contacting Chris Garitano, Multimedia Technician at Catanning Junior High School. Visit our website for updated information about the district and have a great week.